This video is going to show you how to change fixtures on the DMA 8000 model. This is the sample area. It has two fixed pillars and a moving probe connected to the LEDT inside the DMA. These are the parts for three-point bending test. Three-point bending is best for very stiff materials like composite materials, metals, or ceramic materials. Can, the modulus can go up to 10 to the 12th pascals. This is an example for three-point bending. We usually make it into rectangular bars. And I'm going to show you how to put these parts on the DMA 8000 and run the material like this. First, I will need to put the two knives on the fixed pillars and using the hex nuts to secure them. Then you put the center knife on the drive shaft, the blades facing down, using the, the two hex nuts to first to secure the center knife. Now the center knife is installed. Then you need to turn this to the horizontal position and calibrate the pro position. After calibrating the zero position at horizontal position, the second step of the calibrating is to calibrate the pro position at a vertical position. After losing these nuts, we can raise the center knife to slide the sample in. Before sliding the sample in, we want to measure the sample width and thickness. Then we can put a sample in under the center knife and tighten these two nuts Make sure they're barely touching the center knife. And then you want to measure the sample length. The sample length for three-point bending is between the one of the outer knife and the center knife. Or you can measure the distance between the two outer knives and divide that length by two. That will be the sample length for three-point bending. These are the parts for dual cantilever bending text. We are doing this with a horizontal position to minimize the gravity factor. First, we need to make sure we have installed fixed pillars according to the length of the sample. If the sample is shorter, we can move the pillars towards the center. If the sample is longer, we can move it out to take the outer holes to fix the fixed pillars. First, you want to install the T-bar on the drive shaft. While doing so, you want to hold the drive shaft. Make sure it's not damaged due to pushing or pulling. Just finger tight for calibration first. Then at this horizontal position, you do the calibration of the probe with the software. After the calibration, you need to measure the sample width and thickness first before putting the sample between the clamps. You can loose these, loosen these nuts and slide the sample in. And while holding the sample, at the center position, you can tighten the nuts to make sure the sample is clamped well. Now you can use the caliper to measure the sample length. The sample length for dual cantilever bending is between this edge of the fixed pillar and this edge of the moving probe. 
for single cantilever bending setup is very similar to dual cantilever bending. Just instead of having two fixed fillers, we're only using one of them. And the same way we set it up, the T-bar, the rectangular bars, and using the same hex nuts. And this setup is usually for shorter samples than dual cantilever bending samples. And also you can adjust the distance between the fixed pillar and the drive shaft to accommodate for the sample length. After you have set up the single cantilever bending fixtures, you can slide in your sample and tighten. Usually you want to tighten the nuts on the fixed pillar and hold the drive shaft while you tighten the other nuts. For very short samples, you can move the fixed pillar closer to the drive shaft and also use these extenders to run very short samples. Now you can run very short, short samples with minimum length of one millimeters free length.